So we're going to read this book called Mitchell is Moving. It's going to help us learn about economic choice and opportunity cost because he's going to have to pick things to take with him while he's moving because he can't take everything he wants. So we know that economic choice is when you have options, but you can't select all of them. You have to pick the best one that you think. And the opportunity cost is going to be whatever you didn't pick. So for example, if you got to pick out for dinner and you had the option of having pizza or tacos and you got to pick, those are the eco economic choices. So then you pick tacos. So your opportunity cost would be um, pizza. So we're gonna go ahead and read this book. Mitchell is moving. Mitchell ran through his house so, so, or so long, so long, everything, he shouted. Then he ran next door to Margot's house. I'm moving, he said. Where, Margot asked. Two weeks away, said Mitchell. Where is that, asked Margot. It's wherever I will be after I walk for two weeks, said Mitchell. I have lived in the same place for, two, for a long time. It is time for me to go someplace else. No, said Margot, you have only lived next door to me for 50 years. 60, said Mitchell. 50, 60, what's the difference? I want you to stay next door forever. I can't, said Mitchell. I do not want to wake up in the same old bedroom and eat breakfast in the same old kitchen and brush my scales in the, and clean my nails in the same old bathroom. Every room in my house is the same old because I have been there for too long. Well, maybe you are just tired of some old friends, said Margot. What it, who is that, asked Mitchell. Me, said Margot. Maybe you look at me and say, think, same old face, same old tail, same old scales, same old walk, same old talk, same old Margot. No, said Mitchell. I think your face, tail, scales, walk, and talk, I like you. I like, like, like you, said Margot. I like, like, like you too, said Mitchell. He walked to the door. I must pack, he said. Margot sat down in front of the door. You can't get out, she said. I will sit here for another 60 years. I still like you, shouted Mitchell as he climbed out the window. Margot called after him. I will glue you to the roof. I will tie you to your front door with a thick green rope. I will scotch tape you and paperclip you to your house. Then I will get a gigantic rubber band and I will loop you to your house. I will never let you leave. I will unglue, untie, untape, unclip, unloop myself, said Mitchell. Mitchell ran around his house. I'm moving, 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 he shouted. Then he gathered up some of the slimy moss near his house and wrapped it in silver foil, just in case there was no slimy moss two weeks away. Mitchell scooped up some mud from the ditch. Maybe there is no mud two weeks away. Or no swamp water, he said. He filled a plastic bag with water from the swamp and mud from the ditch. Mitchell went to his house and put the slimy moss, mud, and swamp water in his suitcase. The telephone rang again. Mitchell answered it. I will submit you to the ceiling, said Margot, and she hung up. I am beginning to think that Margot does not want me to move, said Mitchell, as he went back to his packing. He packed the cap and mint and said that Margot had given him. Maybe it will be cold two weeks away, he thought. Mitchell heard a shout. He went to the window. Margot was shouting. I will take you to the laundromat in my laundry bag, and I will wash your, away your idea of moving. Margot is a good shower, thought Mitchell. He remembered when Margot had sent him a happy birthday shout through the window. I'm glad you're there. I'm glad you're here. Happy birthday, loud and clear. I wonder if there are any happy birthday shouters two weeks away, thought Mitchell. Mitchell held up a t-shirt that Margot gave him that it said, Mitchell, friend of Margot, Margot, friend of Mitchell. This sure makes me feel sad that I'm moving, said Mitchell, but if I put it on, I won't have to look at it, Mitchell. Put on the t-shirt. If I don't look down at my chest, I will feel all right. He closed his suitcase. There, I am all packed. I am ready to go. Mitchell walked through his house. So long, some old rooms, he said. 
Mitchell took his suitcase and went to Margot's house. I'm all ready to move, he said. I will stick you to your house with chewing gum, said Margot. Mitchell picked up his suitcase and ran. Goodbye, he called. I will write to you every day. Mitchell stopped running and started to walk. I'm moving. I'm, I'm a moving Mitchell, he said. Mitchell walked and walked. When night came, he sent Margot a postcard that said, Dear Margot, greetings from one day away. The second night he wrote, Dear Margot, greeting from, gr more greetings from two days away. The third night he wrote, Dear Margot, more and more greetings from three days away. I am not much of a postcard writer, thought Mitchell, but... He sent more and more greetings to Margot each night. At last, Mitchell reached two weeks away. I made it, he said. Mil Mitchell built a house and moved in. I will go to bed right away so I can wake up in my new bedroom, he said. Mm. New sleeps better, Mitchell said the next day. Now I will eat my first meal in my new kitchen. Mm. New tastes better. Mitchell went outside and sat down in front of his house. This is a good house, he said, but there is something missing. There is nobody next door. What good is a good house when there is nobody next door? I am lonely. I miss Margot. Mitchell wrote a postcard to Margot. Dear Margot, the most greediest ever for two weeks away. The slimy moss is nice and slimy. The, the mud is nice and thick. The swamp water is nice and mucky. But I miss you. Please come see me. Mitchell waited and waited and waited. One morning, he woke up and saw a bottle of glue and thick green rope and a roll of scotch tape, a huge paper clip, a giant rubber band and laundry bag and a sack of cement and a package of chewing gum. Then he saw Margo. Mitchell said Margo. Margo said Mitchell. I'm so happy to see you. Here is my new house and my new everything, Mitchell showed Margot his new house and everything around it. Two weeks away is terrific, said Margot as she and Mitchell ate breakfast. No, it isn't, said Mitchell. There's nobody next door. Oh, said Margot, I have the same problem where I am. There's nobody next door. I have an idea, said Mitchell. And he got some twigs and mud. I have the same idea, said Margot, and she filled her laundry bag with twigs and mud. Then she got her bottle of glue, thick green rubber or rope, big roll of scotch tape, huge paper clip, gigantic rubber band, and sack of cement. We can use these too, she said. Mitchell and Margot built a house next door to Mitchell's house. Do you like it? asked Mitchell. It's perfect, said Margot. Margot moved into her new house. She shouted, I've come to stay two weeks away. Happy birthday. It wasn't Mitchell's birthday, but he was happy anyways. So that's the end of our story. So you guys are actually going to complete an activity where you have to put two items into your suitcase, and then you have to decide which one is more important. So if I were to have a suitcase and I can only pick two things, maybe I'd put my cell phone and a book and then I have to decide which one I want so whichever one you pick will go in the opportunity choice or the economic choice whichever one you don't pick is going to go in the opportunity cost so go ahead and use this story and the other previous powerpoints that you guys have looked at to help you with the activity